is uh, another in the series of lectures about Portsmouth history. I do spend a lot of time doing this. And this time I thought I'd expand a little bit because I've done sort of Portsmouth transportation, but I'm going to include all of the Whitney Island and, uh, for the tr and just the trolleys. So um, with that in mind, and because I have a heck of a lot of slides, we'll get things started. And I'm not using my computer, so I hope it works OK. Mine wouldn't work. The trolley era on this island begins in 1889. The trolley era in the United States begins in 1888. The first electric street railways came to Richmond, Virginia in 1888. And just a year later, Newport was experimenting with it. It's hard to imagine there was a time when transportation was horses and buggies. Uh, that's how we got around back in the day. And uh, mass transit on the island was limited to the railroad, which was built along the side of the island, as the tracks are there now, between 1882, 1862 and 1864. And um, we had other transportation modes. We had the ferries. First ferry was in 1640. Uh, there were all kind, and that was probably either a canoe or maybe a sailboat. But we had all kinds of different ferries. One of the most interesting ones was uh, a horse ferry. They had a uh, boat called a boat more than a ship, that had a treadmill on it, and they had two horses that walked on the treadmill and powered the boat. How that happened, I don't know. <laughs> I only, there, weren't, there wasn't any photography then. It was about 1840. And, uh, but there's a sketch of it that I've seen, and I just can't imagine how you could go across Mount Hope Bay there uh, with two horses. But I don't know. All kinds of experiments. A lot of urban areas in the United States experimented with horse cars in the mid, about 1860 to 1888 or so, and that's what horse cars looked like. They were trolleys, but they were pulled by horses, usually by two horses, by the way. And a lot of the big cities had, had horse cars. Okay, the first electrified street railway, Richmond, Virginia, 1888. And in Newport, they decided the next year, early the next year, January, to have construction in Newport. And they initially decided on uh, two lines that they wanted to have. Obviously, with the amount of traffic that we had in those days, you could probably put a trolley anywhere. They built a, a, a trolley barn, storage barn, on Commercial Wharf down in Newport. That's right about at the foot of Memorial Boulevard, or it was about the foot of Memorial Boulevard, but there are anymore. Uh, and then they had a power plant on Spring Street, and the picture on the right is a little bit of the uh, power plant. Two lines set up. First was the Crosstown Line, and the Crosstown Line began at Commercial Wharf, and eventually its, its terminus was at Newport Beach. Obviously, they were seeking ridership in the summertime of the year. It went up Franklin Street to Spring, and then to Levin, which is gone now because of the extension of Memorial Boulevard crossed Bellevue Avenue and on down what was called Bath Road. Bath Road is Memorial Boulevard. And on to the beach. The, uh, the, I've done some research on that particular line, and one of the things that was really interesting about it was that the, the denizens of Bellevue Avenue were very much upset with the Newport City Council because they were going to have that trolley cross Bellevue Avenue cross Bellevue Avenue, not run along Bellevue Avenue, just cross it. And they were very upset about it. There were all kinds of letters and things like that. But they decided to do it after all, fortunately. So the first trip was in August of, 17, of 1889. That trip was, that, that route was very popular within the summer. And uh, again, in 1890, they had 545,000 riders. Uh, the fare was a nickel, by the way. And in 1891, you see the numbers there, 774,800. This is the Crosstown Line, the beginning of it at Commercial Wharf. This was the storage barn here. And it went up uh, Franklin Street, and then eventually onto Bath Road or Memorial Boulevard, and then down to the beach. Kind of wound around a little bit <coughs> at its beginning. Then they decided to have a main line, and the main line originated at Morton's Park, down, Morton Park down in the Fifth Ward. Uh, I think if you were familiar with the area, uh, Morton Park's a big, four, big park down that way. And uh, 
the trolley started from there, went north on Spring Street, all the way up Spring Street to Broadway, turned right on Broadway, and then ended at One Mile Corner. It ended rather dramatically. I'll show you a picture in a minute. But it ended without any stops, any obvious stops, uh, you know, like bumpers that would, would prevent it from going further. And of course, as you, I hope you know, when they, when they rode trolleys, they had two trolley poles, and they didn't have to turn around. Okay, they just would stop, lower one pole, and raise the other one, and go. And the conductor would move to the other end and uh, and, and started going again. Okay, the first trip there again, August of 1889. This is a trolley in front of City Hall, as you might imagine. If you look at the architecture of City Hall, it's not quite the same anymore. They had a fire around, I think it's 1914 or so, in the upper stories. And unfortunately, they built a square box up on top of there, which is what they have now, instead of this beautiful architecture as you see here. Here's the trolley coming out of Spring Street and onto Broadway. This is Broadway. I guess they didn't have to worry much about the traffic. But, uh, but anyway, that's the, uh, the, where, it, where it came out. And out Broadway, again, not a whole lot of traffic that day, but from Bliss Road by the hospital looking north. Not any traffic. <laughs> you can see in this picture, you can see all the lines up, on the, on the, up above here, too, which helped power the trolley. Here's the trolley line at its end. Uh, it has come, you can see, well, I guess there are some bumpers there, little ones, but that's, that's, a, that's Broadway at one mile corner. So the companies got organized, obviously. Everybody wanted to jump in on this business. It was a really potentially profitable business, even at a nickel affair. And uh, so they decided they would start some companies, some organizations. The, uh, they got very popular. There was the real popularity of the trolleys. The trolleys was from about 1889 until about 1913, 1914. Uh, as I, you may have seen from my title slide, they went out of business in 1925 for reasons we'll talk about eventually. So the Newport and Fall River Street Railway Company was organized in 1898. And its lines were, at first, because of competition, set up parallel to the lines uh, that were done on Broadway because they, nobody could go on anybody else's lines. Eventually they combined them and had turnouts and cross switches and, and things like that. But at first they set, set lines from Broadway into all the way out to Middletown. At the intersection of the east and west main roads, uh, the trolley turned right and went down the hill past Shaw's and uh, kept on going out the east main road all the way to Park Avenue. Stayed right along the right-hand side of the road out to Park Avenue. There was some construction necessary at the Middletown Town Hall because that hill was too steep. The trolleys, by the way, the trolleys travel between 5 and 10 miles an hour, generally. But that hill was too steep, and, and as you can see that when you drive through there. There's a big cut uh, right across from the Ramada Inn there uh, where the trolley went up the hill. So they had to reduce it some at that point because it was too steep. Here's a scenes at Wyatt Road, Wyatt Road and the East Main Road, one in the summer with the trolley station here, and then one in the winter and the trolley station is over there. The trolleys went through in the winter. Cars and horses and buggies didn't go through, but the trolleys did. They had great snow plows attached to some of their uh, equipment, and they really blasted through. This is a trolley parked temporarily for some reason, some crazy reason. The photographer was able to get the conductor to go out and stand in front of it on a cold winter day. <laughs> this picture is across from Oakland Farm. It's, it's sort of right at the, at the entrance to this uh, 70 sports complex. Okay. And, and the picture itself, the original picture, is sharper than this. And you can tell where, where the, this East Main Road turns. That makes a right turn there, slight, a slight turn there, right at Sandy Point Avenue. I should, I should say, perhaps parenthetically, that I, I'm not a, I wasn't born here. I was born in Pennsylvania, and uh, Pittsburgh especially, and Pittsburgh was a trolley town. Uh, I rode the trolley to high school every day. And uh, there, there were something like, oh, 70 or 80 different trolley lines in Pittsburgh. Um, 
Most of which are gone now. They've been replaced by light rail a lot, but they still use a lot of mass transit there. But when I went to high school way back in the 50s, um, we rode the trolley all the time. And we got a pass on the trolley for 75 cents for a week. Good deal. This is a familiar scene, I hope. This is East Main Road, right across, right over here, okay? And the reason I want to show you this, first of all, the Masonic Hall is right here, which later became armor photography, and I don't know if it's got a computer thing now, I guess. It isn't all being used. But it was the Masonic Hall back in the 1860s, up until, oh, I don't know, probably until the new Masonic Hall was built, which was, I don't know, 50s or 60s, something. 1965. 65? Thank you. Okay, what, what I want to show you in this picture, though, this is, interesting to me anyway, is the white band on the pole. The white band means that was a trolley stop. Of course, the trolley would probably stop anywhere that they could get a fare, but essentially these were formal stops. You can see the Methodist church in the background, by the way, uh, over there on that side. That's a, an easy one to recognize where it was. Then if you go a little further up the road, here's the trolley tracks along the right side of the road. And here, this building, was David Anthony's Barbershop and Pool Hall. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so that's, I mean, this is right past, oh, they hear the Getzingers, okay, that's their house there. This is right at uh, Dexter Street. Nice walking path along the side of the road there, and the John Borden house is just out of the picture on the right. Uh, John Borden was a great uh, donator of things like the land for this building uh, when they built the library in 1898. Uh, and then what was on this side over here of the building? Tennis courts, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. the, the Portsmouth Trolley Barn. This was, wasn't easy to locate. I had to get some old maps out and, and see where it was. And where it was is just north of Citizens Bank where they just built a new multi-business building there, right in there, and uh, it was the Portsmouth Car Barn. And you can see the trolleys there. These are two of the very common trolleys, an open car, which has no sides on it, and uh, a closed car over here. The date of that is probably, let's see, I think they built that barn in 1906, so that's probably about 1908, 1910. They had, I'll get into the car barns in a minute, the routers. Later, the history of the Portsmouth Car Barn kind of got a little decrepit. Uh, they ended up not using it all that long, and they eventually just used it for storage. But here's an open car trolley uh, sitting up. That might, that's the Lawrence, I think. The Lawrence was a special trolley that you could hire for a party and, uh, and ride the rails having a party. I have a better picture of it, but I think that's it. Uh, it, it was still standing in some of you might correct me. As far as I know, 1946, somewhere around there, but it was just all falling down at that point, long after the trolleys were gone. Although there were, in the early 40s, there were some trolleys inside. The power plant, power station, this is on Power Street, uh, and uh, it was down over the hill, and it was a supplementary power station. The main propelling station was down in Newport, and this was available in case of emergencies power shortages, if you can imagine, that they were happening around here, uh, and uh, was, was sort of an extra power station. They brought in coal to a wharf down at the bottom of the hill on the, on the river, and they actually built a wharf to, uh, to take care of the power plant when they were building it. It was there for quite a while, too, and I've, I've been down there, and I don't think, I think it's all been built over now. You can't see any remains of it. Okay, this is the view on East Main Road. The trolley is coming up from Park Avenue, going south. This is the intersection with Sprague Street. Okay, you can see how the road sort of goes over to the, to the side. And uh, I wonder if this trolley rang his bell when he got close to this horse and buggy. I hope so. But again, when, when you reconstruct these photographs, they're really interesting because you can see some of these buildings that are, that are still there. And that's kind of neat. Uh, in addition to being a history teacher, I was a professional photographer, so I shouldn't brag about that when you see. It. None of these are my pictures. <laughs> but 
we, most of them were by a photographer who roamed this area in the, the 1908 to 1913 period. And he was an extraordinary photographer and did really nice work. O.E. Du Bois was his name. That was the third book I wrote. I've told this story many times. I'm sure most of you have heard it. But I had, in 1983, I had 60 of his postcards of the whole seconded area from Westport. Actually, Westport to Jamestown, but no Newport. For some reason, he never went to Newport that I know of. Anyway, uh, I had 60 of his postcards to, and I said, I can't be many more. I'll write a book on him. So I did, and I now have 640 of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're wonderful. You're, you're, you've seen some of them already. You'll see some more. This is the trolley at the top of Park Avenue, right at the corner of East Main Road and Park Avenue. And this is the Barker's Carousel. Barker's Carousel was a carousel that was built in 1898 in Island Park and became the beginning of what was called a trolley park. Trolley parks were just that. They were built by the trolley <coughs> companies to encourage ridership so people would ride the trolley. And of course the, the location of Island Park was perfect because you could get a trolley from Newport, Middletown, Portsmouth, Tiverton, Fall River and get there. Uh, and the Barker's Carousel was the first building that was there. Uh, it was a loof carousel. If you know anything about carousels, they were really special. The horses were really pretty extraordinary, hand carved. And next to the carousel is the trolley stop, right there. Uh, and so that, that was a postcard from, oh, probably around 1900, 1903 or something. And this is the Island Park Amusement Park. Is that sharp? Not very, huh? It's awesome. Looks great on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> we had a a, uh, a roller coaster. You can see it here. It goes all the way over here. We had a dance hall, which was right here. We had a, a row of, you know, those things where you throw a ball and knock over the milk bottles, that kind of stuff, and wheels that turn. So that's all this line right here. And we have to show, because Liz is here, we have to show the, the diving horse tower. There was a tower here that uh, they put a horse up on this tower and it dove into that little pool. Uh, there's a ramp that went up behind. I have, I have better pictures of it, but I won't show them. Uh, and of course, there was just all kind of activity going on. And the, the uh, amusement park was there from 1898 until 1938. Uh, there were a lot of fires in the teens and 20s, but the, it was a 38 hurricane that made firewood out of it all. And some pieces of it were were pushed about all the way across the island, just about really destroyed. Anyway, it was a it was a it was a center of a lot of activity in Portsmouth. Some of it legal. <laughs> <laughs> the road that you can see in that picture is that where Park Avenue is now? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this this was all right here that used to be Sheehan's office supply. What is it? Cafe de la Paix or something Cafe like that now? Pay, okay, yeah. that's that building. Here's Park Avenue. Right okay. there. Still, so it was right by 501. A lot of you remember where the flea market was. Yeah. Yeah. That was the remains of it, too. So that's that's where it was in Island Park. That's the carousel in the foreground, right? The carousel is, yes. Right there. Yeah, the, the, that's another lecture, but the roller coaster was really a pretty big thing. It was called the Bullet, and uh, it was rebuilt once or twice, but it was really a long roller coaster. They really wrapped it around. And it came all the way over over to here. Wow. <coughs> I'll do that lecture again someday. At the so-called Stone Bridge, uh, this was the trolley going across the Stone Bridge. And this Stone Bridge is prior to 1908. It's a wooden bridge. Uh, it was not a steel bridge. The steel bridge was built in 08 and another one in, in 12. Uh, those, and, and there was a bridge there going back to 1795. Uh, a wooden bridge. They built one in 1795-92. Anyway, in that decade. And uh, three months later they built another one because it all washed out. Those who've been through there on the boat know how that rip goes through there. And uh, with wooden pilings and everything, it didn't last very long. There are, there are, I think it's seven different bridges that were built on that location. And uh, the last one was 1912. And it went out of business in 1956 
when the Sakonic River Bridge, the old Sakonic River Bridge, was was built. It was pretty beat up in the 1954 hurricane too. Here we are testing the, whether the bridge will hold the trolley. This is the 1912 bridge. I'm glad it did. Of course, all that extra weight you see standing on the bridge might have been a problem too. But the uh, the trolley is coming across again, testing the weight limits on the bridge. This was a, a big bridge. They called it a double lift roller bridge, and it, it closed like this, and then it opened like that. And there was a man on it who, who ran it, and even a sailboat, he had to open it for them, uh, coming through there. There wasn't a whole lot of commercial traffic, but a lot of you know, tourist traffic coming through. This is, again, another one of the stone bridge, again, the trolley coming across from Tibbert. And this is the trolley at Tibbert, at the uh, uh, stone bridge in Drumsport. We remember, I hope, um, that long ago it was torn down. And then the trolley here would go on to Fall River. Okay? Uh, and beyond. I, I've told this story before, but you could get a trolley from from Fifth Ward, Newport, and end up in Nashua, New Hampshire. It took you four and a half hours. It probably cost you a buck and a half or something. <laughs> but um, anyway, the connections were all over us. We're, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Back to Newport, the training station branch, all that sailor traffic, you got to get all those people into town, obviously. That was built about 1903, and it, it kind of, it's hard to explain it unless you know Newport fairly well. It goes through the point section of Newport, uh, from off Farewell Street and Farewell Street to Walnut in the point, crossed a bridge over the railroad that was already there, turned onto 3rd Street, and then 3rd Street out past the Navy Hospital that was under construction. I have some pictures of that and ended up out at uh, almost to gate one. You'll see the difference. At first, it stopped before the causeway, and then later they extended it to a waiting station. And obviously, a lot of sailors on Liberty were transported on this. This is, this is where it stopped, short of the, co of the uh, causeway, which is here. And then this is turning on to 3rd Street, coming off the, uh, off the Navy base. <laughs> And there's two more pictures of it. Why they all stood outside, I don't really know. <laughs> and then here's the extended uh, station across the causeway over to, to the, where Gate 1 is now. <clears throat> the Old Colony Street Railroad Company also was an Old Colony Railroad Company. The Old Colony Railroad was, uh, at first it was the, uh, well, first in this area, it was the Old Colony and Fall Rivers Railway. Trains. Uh, then they decided to extend it into Newport, and they decided to change the name to uh, Old Colony and Newport Railway Company. And the people of Fall River were very incensed about that, very upset. Uh, anyway, that was the line that was run along the west side of the island. They also had street railways, trolleys as well. And all the lines on the island were merged with the Old Colony Company in uh, 1901. So they weren't independent really very long. It was headquartered in Brockton and uh, had more than 300 miles of trolley tracks all over. That lasted until 1911 when that was taken over by the Boston and Northern Street Railway Company and became the Bay State Railway Company. And that was more or less the last merger. That's one line, that's one side of the island. The, one, the line on the West Main Road was a little bit more complicated. At first it was set up as the Newport and Bristol Ferry Railway. That didn't last very long. As you can see here, that was in 1902. And in 1903 it became the Newport and Providence Railway. It was very difficult to work out any kind of easy way to get from Newport to Providence unless you wanted to go on a ferry. Because you would have to go to Fall River and get on another line and then go up up route 95, 195 and uh, to get to Providence that way. Otherwise, you could take a ferry at, uh, at, at Bristol Ferry across to Bristol. So the way that one was set up was the, a group of investors set it up, and uh, mostly local investors, although some were from Boston. And eventually, it became the Newport and Providence Railway. And they would connect. You'd go across the ferry from Bristol Ferry, 
And, and a commonly accepted idea that is mistaken, the ferry wharf for the trolleys was what is now under the Mount Hope Bridge. Right? It was not Bristol Ferry Landing. Okay? And I'll, I'll show you pictures of that in a minute. So the ferry, though, would go across from there and take you to Bristol, where the ferry landing there was, uh, it's, it's hard to describe, I can picture it. Anyway, you would get on the, off the ferry in uh, Bristol, and you'd get on a train uh, there, in the Consolidated. It was an electric train, uh, and it ran along the route that is now the East Bay Bike Path. That was a, tro that was a trolley rail, or train rail line. <laughs> that went all the way up to Providence. That's why it was saved and, and you know, unencumbered when it came time to build the uh, East Bay bike path. So they again they, they double tracked the trolleys along Broadway and because of competition and nobody wanted to let anybody else ride on their their rails. Speaking of rails, let me say something that, that got a present tonight. A piece of trolley rail. Oh. <laughs> 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 Smaller than railroad rail. Okay, but that's how it, how it looks. Yeah. Dave Reese gave us brought in that to show. He has railroad rail too. Right? Anyway, you can look at that after. Okay, so the route on the West Main Road was different because we had some problems there problems with the steepness of a couple of hills. The trolleys didn't go uphill all that well. They didn't, and, and sometimes when they went up the hill, they came back down the hill. <laughs> Backwards. Um, anyway, so the main route for the, the uh, Newport and Providence route was following everything the same in, um, in Newport <coughs> out to Two Mile Corner. And at Two Mile Corner, obviously, it went straight ahead out the West Main Road. The East and West Main Roads, by the way, were laid out in 1640. What? Okay? So essentially, those routes had not changed in however many years that is. I'm not going to try to do that right now. Uh, but that, the, the King's Highway to the West and the King's Highway to the East, that's what they were called back then. And when Newport was settled, which was 1649, Portsmouth was 1638. Uh, but when Newport was settled, when, when eight people decided that Portsmouth was too crowded because there were 35 people here, <laughs> they decided to go to Newport. <laughs> there were other reasons. Uh, the main other reason was commercial. These were people who with, with deep pockets who wanted to take advantage of the of international trade. And trading from the wharves in Newport, although they had to be built because it was a swamp, the, the trade from there compared with the trade from from uh, Town Pond out here uh, was quite uh, exciting to consider. So William Coddington and seven of his friends moved to Newport in 1639. Um, and, and when they did, they, they took all the Portsmouth records with them. And some of the early Portsmouth records are in a book in Providence that are, part, that are identified as Newport. The compact was, was taken from that by the archives people and separated. And so that's why we can bring the compact down. But the first year we had the compact, which was about five years ago, well, it was during the, the, the uh, 375th anniversary, they had the book. And the book had like 20 pages of Portsmouth town meeting records, including the compact, and then Newport stuff. Because what happened when they had a, a dispute at, in the uh, early days, partly between Coddington and the followers of Coddington and the followers of Ann Hutchinson, um, they just decided at, the, at a town meeting in 1639 that they would close the book, take it with them, and leave and go to Newport. <laughs> that's how it all went together. Anyway, that's another lecture too. So, uh, so the trolley then went out the West Main Road, uh, and at certain places, when it went inland, because of the steepness of hills, first was Thurston's Hill. Thurston's Hill is, it's not Raytheon Hill, but it's the big hill on this side, of, on, on the other side of Raytheon, okay, where the Valley Inn is, Valley Inn there. 
that hill. From there down past the, con the uh, apartments, condos, and stuff like that, down the bottom of the hill, and then up to Raytheon. Uh, both of those were bad hills. So the, the cars had to be diverted into the interior of the island, and they ran through open land. I have some pictures showing you of that. And we all know what National Grid's been doing out there for the last year, year and a half. <coughs> They lay down a really nice walking path under all those poles, and they're taking it up as they get by. Um, but that's the route that the uh, trolley, trolley line went. So, when you come off Turkey Hill, let me get my bearings right here. Coming off Turkey Hill, they went <coughs> inland. They went inland by, uh, oh, it's a motel that's right across from Melville School, right in that area. And, and by the way, you can see these power lines today. You can see how they go inland. If you've ever played golf at Green Valley, you know there are telephone poles and power lines run right through the middle of that. That was the trolley line. Okay, so it went through the camp meeting, okay, on Headley Street. You know where that is, and you know how the power lines cross that. And they go over the hill and down to Freeborn Street. Okay, that avoids... Turkey Hill, which is, Turkey Hill is, is where the compactor is. We used to call it Turkey Hill, now we call it the compactor. <laughs> anyway, um, so, and, and that particular line, when it got out there, down Freeborn Street, took a right on Freeborn, and then left on Turnpike, which became Bristol Ferry, eventually, and then down the Ferry Road. I, I'll show you pictures of some of this here. Then you get on the ferry to Bristol. The ferry was also owned by the power company, by the, the trolley company. New car barns were built. Two, two were built. The first one was Vernon Avenue. Vernon Avenue is behind Jesus Savior Church. And this is what that car barn looked like, which became the primary one, really, for, for the uh, uh, Newport and Fall River Street Railway. And that car barn, as the note says there, is still there. You go behind St. Jesus Savior Church and you wind around just a little bit, you'll see this big, huge building, which is some construction companies and things like that are in there now. I'm not sure what all the businesses are, but the building is still there. That was a big car barn, a really big one. It was built in 1906. Then you had the Middletown car barn. Some of us remember that one because it was right across from Green Lane on the West Main Road. When in, in our time, they had buses there. <coughs> Okay. And, and the, the, the house on the right here was uh, the house of George Toll, and George Toll was the, uh, the uh, manager of the Newport and, uh, Newport and Providence Railway. George Toll was uh, Beverly Hall and Ann uh, yeah. Salvation's grandfather. Okay. He had his house right next to the trolley bar. So this is the trolley barn. And then here's the trolley barn in the wintertime. They actually shoveled the snow to get the trolleys out. But they had plows on the main roads. The, the Newport and Providence line on the West Main Road, this is a, one of my favorite pictures because this is the West Main Road. And you see the horses and buggies are kind of getting through, but you also can see the trolley tracks are totally clear. This photograph was taken by modern standards right in front of St. Lucy's Church, looking south. Okay. These houses are on uh, um, Chase and Lane <coughs> over here. And again, between this picture and the East Main Road at Two Mile Corner, there were two farms. That's all. All open space. Kentucky, I'm not Kentucky. What was it? The Chicken City place wasn't there yet. <laughs> one of the things that's really interesting about this one, though, is that this near farm was owned by a man by the name of Edward Brown. Edward Brown was the president of the Newport and uh, Providence Street Railway Company. And so he had his own station. Right? And when the flag went out, the trolley stopped and took him wherever he wanted to go. Anyway, he was president of the uh, NNG for like 30 years, a long time. So in the interior of the island, this is where the trolley lines went. I came across this collection of, and there's about eight of them all together, 
of old pictures of the trolley lines winding through the country. And, and I, having been a professional photographer and a historian, I spent a lot of time trying to identify photographs. Uh, my life's work, pretty much. I can't tell you where any of these were. <laughs> They're really almost impossible uh, to see. But again, it's just a single two-track line, mostly, uh, running through the middle of the island. <laughs> but that's, that's how it went inland. I'm sure they destroyed a few farms in the process. Wow, I don't know why these are so soft. They shouldn't be fine art. Um, okay, this is what I think is a promotional photograph for the trolley company. You've got an open car here. You've got some people standing around in front. You've got a horse and buggy over here going down Raytheon Hill, starting down Raytheon Hill. This was taken just about in front of Chase Farms there on the, on the West Main Road. And although it doesn't show up very well in this picture, uh, the trolley line over here goes inland. It goes inland down to what is now the Green Valley Country Club. And, and that's where the trolley line went. And you can see the power lines are still there. You can see how they divert and, and go over to that, that side. And this is a, a companion photograph, I think, taken the same, at the same time, because some of the same people are in there, but looking the other direction. And you have Boyd's Mill, an eight-vein windmill there that now sits in Paradise Park in Middletown. Um, it was on, uh, on uh, Mill, Mill Lane. And a trolley again, looking back up the West Main Road. And I guess you could bike on the West Main Road in those days. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that gives you an idea of what of the top of uh, Raytheon Hill, looking both directions. Again, the trolley line went inland by the Turkey Hill, and it went by the camp meeting. And although you can't read it very well because it's not very sharp, this is at the intersection of, of the power lines and Headley Street. Uh, and as you go west on Headley Street and you look to your right, the camp meeting's all right there. And just beyond the camp meeting, actually a little bit part of the camp meeting, was this little station here. And what's interesting about this postcard is that the advertisement on the trolley is for the camp meeting. Mm -hmm. Probably can't read it there. Anyway, that's... Uh, an important spot that again you can you can reconstruct in your in my eye. One of the things also about the, uh, the the trolley line there was that and, and again this is you could get the trolley anywhere and go almost anywhere. This is again in the area where National Grid has been working there. At least you can reconstruct that one. When it got down to the bottom of the hill, after turning onto um, Freeborn Street, the trolley came around and got onto Turnpike Avenue here. Is your house there, Dave? Where's Dave? Probably in there. Um, anyway, you got some people working up on the pole there. And you can see how fresh the, the tracks and everything are. <coughs> Maintenance was a big job on, on these trolley lines. It's amazing how, how, um, how much work it must have been. Then beyond Freeborn Street, this is alongside Turnpike Avenue, looking toward, in the direction of the Mount Hope Bridge. Okay. This house is still there, right by Dexter Street. And you can see the trolley tracks. They really dug them into the ground, too. You can see that there. And uh, heading toward Bristol Ferry. And when it went over the hill, past where the Mono Bridge starts now, down the hill, and it, it turned onto Ferry Road. Ferry Road is still there, and that's where the trolley line went. Bristol Ferry was, was pretty amazing in terms of a transportation hub in Portsmouth at the turn of the last century, 1900, 1910. Because you not only had the trolleys, and the trolleys, by the way, and I, I just didn't even get into this, the trolleys carried freight as well. There were freight trolleys that they used. Uh, but you had the trolley, you had the railroad after 1864 going through the middle there. You had the steamboat wharf, which is the main wharf at Bristol Ferry, where steamboats came in and went from Providence to, to, uh, to there to Fall River, or Providence to there to Newport and New York and so on. Steamboat wharf. And then you had the ferry wharf where the ferries came across from Bristol. 
if, if, I haven't been down there a long time, but when I did a book on transportation, I don't know, 19, 19, uh, 20, 2006, something like that. That was earlier than that. Anyway, I went down under the Mount Hope Bridge, and you can still see pilings there from the trolley wharf. They still stick up out of the water. And again, the trolley wharf's been gone since 1925, 100 years. Nobody around who rode the trolleys. You know, you have to be about 93 to even have been born when there were trolleys. <laughs> So almost are getting there, not yet. <laughs> this is the wharf at Bristol Ferry. This is the train station at Bristol Ferry. Uh, and again, it probably was a Sunday afternoon or something because everybody's all dressed up. And, and what you would do is you'll get off the trolley here and get down a ramp right here that led you onto the Bristol Ferry. And then you would ride that to Bristol. And if that isn't your final destination, you get on that consolidated electric train and that would carry you right up to Providence. I read somewhere how long that took. I think it was 45 minutes, something like that. It wasn't all that long. And this is standing on the wharf looking back the other direction. You have a trestle here that the train went across. Okay, and here's the wooden deck of the ferry. And I think some of those houses are still there. Uh, and then there's a the next view is of this trolley wharf in some disrepair. <laughs> Again, late in its career. The trolley's still somehow able to get across that, but you can see that somebody forgot to pay the maintenance budget or something. <laughs> kind of a mess. This is a later picture that shows uh, one of the buses coming off the, the ferry. Again, using the same wharf. You see the, the, the ferry Bristol is out there. And then the, the buses, and the trolley tracks are still there, but this was <coughs> the trolleys had declined. There were two Bristol ferries in their career. The first, <clears throat> in 1903, was the Sagamore, which was just a ferry boat. You couldn't take a car on it or a horse and buggy or anything. Uh, the second was the Bristol, which you could. <coughs> the Sagamore was 1903, the Bristol was 1904. And the Bristol was much, much more modern, as you can see from the, the difference between the two. And the top picture is the two of them. Uh, Bristol and the Sagamore. They took postcards of everything. So what happened? Trolley ridership on the island peaked around the, at the end of the first decade of the 20th century. It was bypassed by a whole bunch of other stuff. As you can see here, the bus, the Jitney, which was a small bus, the railroad, and the automobile. Uh, and what happened is ridership declined, the, <coughs> the fares went up, and so that you know, it was kind of a self-defeating situation. They flourished in, oh, let me, let, me back, let me say one thing about railroad. In 1912, there were eight trains into Newport and eight trains, passenger trains, out of Newport every day. Think about that. Now, they weren't, you know, 20-car <coughs> trains. They probably were two or three. But train traffic was really big. But if you wanted to go on by train from Newport to Providence, you went to Fall River, got on another train. That's, a, that's always been a problem with transportation around here. Is that you get to the end of the island, there's nothing there. <laughs> and we had, we had the Stone Bridge, which until 1929 was the only bridge off the island. But in fact, you see some of these pictures that have one horse and buggy going across, or one farm wagon. Um, anyway, I got distracted. Back to Bristol Ferry. So you had, <laughs> you had this hub of trains, steamboats, ferries, <coughs> trolleys, all coming together in one place, which is really kind of cool. And all the farmers, on the, on, in Portsmouth anyway, and probably more from other places on the island, brought their produce there to ship it wherever they wanted it to go. So it was a real transportation hub. And you had a big train station there, too. Uh, the train stopped there. And so there was a lot of lot going on in that now rel relatively quiet corner of our town. Uh, so the Newport Electric Corporation, which some of us remember, wasn't that long ago, we still had the Newport Electric Corporation. They took over the trolleys and the trolley lines 
one of the people that was involved in, in a lot of the changes that took place, and again, the whole idea of the end of all this is another whole lecture that I won't get into today much, but one of the big financiers involved with taking over the trolley lines and converting a number of them to bus lines was William H. Vanderbilt, who lived at Oakland Farm and was a senator in the late mid-30s and governor of Rhode Island from 1938 to 1940. And William H. Vanderbilt, son of Alfred Wynne Vanderbilt, um, lived at Oakland Farm most of the time, but he decided that he was going to invest in bus companies. And the bus companies, obviously, the buses could go anywhere. They weren't, didn't have to stay on a track somewhere. So they could go to other parts of Newport and so on. And so the popularity of the buses uh, came on very quickly between 1920 and 1925. By 1925, there were no more trolleys. The, um, the, they were replaced by the buses, they were replaced by automobiles, and they were um, you know, no longer as flexible a means of mass transportation that they once had been. It's too bad. It'd be kind of nice to have them now. <laughs> At least light rail. Uh, try to drive into Newport, America's Cup Avenue on a summer afternoon. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the trolley gradually faded out. The rails, the, the routes got shorter. Uh, some of the routes got canceled. They stopped the route to, to Fall River, for example, and things began to shrink. And eventually, by 1925, the, almost everywhere, the trolleys were replaced by buses. The, uh, there still were some, and there were an occasional run in 1925, 1926, where they would sort of celebrate the good old days, and, and they kept the lines were still there, and so they would keep them, uh, and they would uh, uh, you know, have parties, uh, nostalgia parties, I guess you would say. By the way, just one other thing, on, on Quaker Hill over here, okay, from Town Hall down, you have that big wide space on the right-hand side, okay? That was because the trolleys ran alongside there. And the power lines are well into that. So, but the trolleys really were, the trolley companies. And, and there were other plans. There were plans to take a trolley line down Quarry's Lane, down, uh, I'm trying to think of the names of streets, across Union Street, all the way across, and, and various other places. Like the town hall has a big chart from the different trolley companies saying where they intended their routes to go. None of that was done. So, here are the nasty buses that came along. <laughs> the, this one's coming off the, the Bristol Ferry. That's a Fagel Port uh, bus in Newport at One Mile Corner. And here we have the dastardly automobile at Washington Square. <laughs> the, the interface between horse and buggies and automobiles was pretty hairy uh, around here. and and. Well, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of accidents, I could say. <laughs> now here's the trolley coming down Spring Street, and look at the cars, <laughs> all along the line. Yeah, looks like good. <laughs> <laughs> Except, I, uh, was it one way? I think it was one way. Then, but the other way, I think it went the other way. This is a bus, a Newport and Newport and Fall River bus, bus. This is a jitney of sorts. That's a a special carry that actually sits in front of the uh, Stonebridge Inn. And that was a, a route that was used to haul people from the railroad in Tiverton. There was a railroad station right across the, the uh, right across from where the stone from the Sukkot River Bridge is. So they would pick up passengers there and take them to uh, Little Compton mostly. That was a Little Compton line. <laughs> and there, was, there were plans for that too, by the way, in 1898. There were plans to build a trolley line from the Tiverton Railroad Station to Sakana Point. That never came to be either. Pretty amazing. Some of the transportation industry is a lot of fun. Now, in 1924, they were uh, laying new track on Broadway. This is right about in front of the Cafe 200, right, on Broadway, which is kind of interesting because the trolley line were just about dead. Well, eventually, they came around with repaving and everything and tore up the trolley lines. 
in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> this is trolley rail. <laughs> and they, uh, they uh, tore up some of the trolley line, put in some of the piping system on Broadway. This is the same place, by the way, but more or less in front of the Cafe 200, a little bit up the past. And let me see if I got the right picture. Oh, well, we'll go to it. This is, this is my favorite picture. This is the intersection of, of, um, of Franklin Street and Spring Street. And so what you have here is a trolley, an open car trolley. You have another trolley over here. You have a trolley coming up Franklin Street. You have a car. You have a horse and buggy. <laughs> amazing car. That's a test over here. Give way. You know the trolleys don't give way. Shouldn't that be 1913? Oh yeah, 1913. That's the last slide. Yeah, 1913. That's it. That's the trolley. Than I intended, so I'll be happy to take any questions anybody has. Any? Yes. You're familiar with Don O'Hanley's books, The Trolleys of Newport? Newport by Trolley. Or Newport by Trolley, yeah. Don O'Hanley wrote that in 1976, and he and I conspired. Uh, I was just getting into transportation at that point, and he loaned me some pictures and things like that. Yeah, I'm very familiar. His is good because he has a, a lot of the technical information. You can't find that anymore. It was published in 1976, but it has a lot of pictures in it and a lot of um, charts. Of ridership and, and the amount of you know income that they got and things like that. It's really good. And there's still two trolleys, I believe, or one definitely in uh, Portsmouth on uh, West Shore Road. I've heard that, but I haven't seen it. Okay. Yeah, they've remodeled it uh, into a cottage. Right. And I was told there was a lot of them that when the Fall River Line or trolley line uh, mm -hmm. ceased operation, they scrapped the metal and the wood was brought here for cottages. And I think in Portsmouth Camp, uh, there might be another That's one. That's what I know. In the Portsmouth Camp meeting, there's a building that on, when you look at it on the side, it has like nine or ten windows right after one after another. I have a picture of that as a trolley that was put there at the end of the trolley time. But it's been built over since. But they did leave the windows like that and you can you can pick it out. It's really wow. easy to see. Yeah, those are the I've heard of the one that you can um, yeah, was, but I, I haven't yeah. seen that one. That's, yeah, it's it's in somebody's like backyard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like behind the house, it's like a, on, the, on the water side. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. Other so questions? Yes. Yeah, what company built the trolleys? Oh, good question. You have to look at Don's book for that, I think. Um, the St. Louis Car Company was one of them, I know. And, and as far as the ones locally, I'm not really sure. I, I, I've seen that, but it isn't something that I sort of get into much. But, but St. Louis Car Company was a big one that built a lot of the, and I, I know a lot of the Pittsburgh trolleys were built by St. Louis Car Company. And I think it was there then, too. But I'm not sure. They were small. And, and when they got rid of them, by the way, they took them all out to Bristol Ferry, where the trolley tracks came very close to the railroad. And they offloaded them from the trolley tracks onto the trains. And quite a few of them went to Asbury Park, New Jersey, for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, there's, there are pictures in Don's book uh, showing them parked alongside the railroad and, and getting ready to. If you see that book on eBay or anything, buy it. It's really good. Mine's falling apart. I got to try to keep it together because it's really good. Other questions? No? Everybody's happy? Yes. <laughs> so, who are the laborers? Did all the work in, in down the I'm not sure if there's a particular ethnic background that was involved uh, in, in doing that. I mean, they were employees of the, the car companies. And, and as you can see, over the course of, of 20, 30 years, they kept expanding and, and more trolleys and new tr newer trolleys and more stops and so on. I think it was full-time employment for a lot of people. Um, the uh, One other thing that triggers something else in my mind, Below the power station on Power Wharf, Power Street, there was a wharf. And they brought in a lot of the trolley poles to that wharf. And when you go down past 
Sprague Street. On the right-hand side, there are three big houses that are the same. Those were built for the workers on the trolley line when they did, uh, when they came here. And uh, I, one of the things I've come across, and I got, I got a bunch of it, but I didn't get enough of it, was a woman by the name of Abby Sherman, who lived and wrote a diary. Lived here. Well, she wrote a diary between 1895 and 1932. And she was the biggest town gossip going. <laughs> <laughs> she lived at the top, she lived up where, what's the sandwich shop at the top of Quaker Hill? Subway. What is it? Subway. Subway. She was Arthur Sherman's mother. Yeah, she was Arthur Sherman's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Sherman was a town clerk for about 40 years. Yeah. Died in 1970-something. I, I knew him but I didn't really pick his brain, darn it. Uh, but uh, that, their house was there where the subway shop and their barn was across the street. The barn was there until about 25 years ago. Yeah, where the liquor store is now. Yeah, and, and they, they lived down over the hill to the water. Okay, anyway, Abby was, she, she was, she would always say, you know, the trolley tracks went by the house today. In other words, they were building them. And uh, if there was an accident, as there was, uh, often, the uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a name, not Amos Smith, but someone who, who owned the house, which is now the heart of Portsmouth Abbey, uh, was killed by a trolley in front of Bernie's Dry Goods over here. Yeah. Uh, his carriage was run into and he was killed. Hall was his name. Yeah, yeah. Hall. Good Hall. A man that I know a man that witnessed that accident. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mr. Hall was in a horse and buggy, I guess, yeah. and the trolley hit him. Yeah. As he was come on, Mr. Frank Waller was his name. Uh, he was a young boy coming out of Chase's grocery store, and he witnessed the accident. <laughs> the trolleys didn't go very fast. <laughs> really, mostly five to ten miles, even late in their career. They didn't go much faster. And there were all kind of restrictions. Of course, the speed limit in the town was about eight miles an hour. There were cars, um, hazardous automobiles. And, and also, if, if you were moving a house in Portsmouth and you had to leave it in the middle of one of the main roads, you had to overnight. You had to put lanterns on it. <laughs> yes. I noticed most of the line was a single track, right? Yeah. How did they coordinate them? Going the two ways. They, they had uh, turnouts, they were called. And, and what it would do would be a, a, a separate track of all oh, yeah. side yeah. and then come back on. Now, what did they use? Telegraph to, to get their message? <coughs> I, think was, I think it was a matter of, of knowing the, the time I see. of when they were supposed to be there. Or they would have to pull over to wait because they knew there was a trolley coming the other direction. I, I don't know of any trolley collisions. There probably were. But in general, uh, they had these. Yeah, uh, turnouts sure. where they could move to a part of another track just to get out of the way. You know, I, I, they they ran fairly often. They really were. For, uh, and again, you can see how many people you can get on the trolley. You probably only could get about 20 people on the trolley. Uh, and, but it was kind of interesting. It's a really interesting era, and all of mass transportation around this island is, is really fascinating. I, again, I, I've done a book on that, and. Uh, not with as much detail as this, as you've seen tonight, but it really is a, an interesting island when, it, when you consider how constrained it is with one bridge off the island. Uh, people got around, and, and farm produce got the market, which was big. I mean, that was a big part of transportation around here. The other questions? Yes? Uh, I don't know if this is a question or a comment. Maybe you can tell me. Um, so looking back, it, it uh, you know, was a... Uh, you know, but a challenging world to live in. It wasn't easy, but there was certainly a lot of, um, you know, sort of glory about it and, uh, you know, and nostalgia. And I, I'm just sort of wondering, as we look forward, uh, you know, are we going to have that same sort of sense in the future about what we're going through now? I mean, I'm not framing this with any sort of an answer possible. But, I mean, I think we, I, I follow energy matters. and uh, and. Uh, energy uses 40%, no, 
Transportation uses 40% of the energy that we consume in this country. And, uh, and you know, automobiles, uh, et cetera. Of course, manufacturing and big businesses and stuff. Uh, but transportation is 40%. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, or, or thinking, I'm beginning to see a lot of uh, hybrid cars and electric cars and bikes. Bike Newport, for example, you know, is, is pushing hard and doing a great job. Very successful with bike lanes and stuff in the city and, you know. Sort of wondering, what's your crystal ball look like? I was a biker for a lot of years. I used to bike from Sandy Point to around the Ocean Drive and back. 28 miles, wow. when I was in my 50s and 60s, um, way back then. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I, I just, you know, do you want to take a bike on the East Main Road? <laughs> no, no. 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 <laughs> I never did that. No. Uh, and it's just hazardous because of traffic. I mean, it's hazardous, hazardous in a car, <laughs> especially this road out here. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, you know, you can imagine, though, the amount of, energy that was being produced in 1910 compared to what's being produced now. Obviously, there's a lot more, but we are devouring it. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, question to answer. Have you been to the trolley museums in uh, Connecticut, on this side of New Haven, and another one up in Maine? I've been to one in, in, outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. There's, there's one, a big one there. I, I'm a member there. Okay. <laughs> but I never get back there. But they have a great newsletter that comes out. Yeah, I know there are. <coughs> and you can go for a trolley ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did. <laughs> yes. The boxcar storage facility that you talked about on Vernon Avenue, you said the building's still there. Was that the Newport Roofing Building? Yeah. That's big, it's the only big building back yeah. there. It's, it's got a, you know, a lot of add-ons and a lot of, you wouldn't recognize it as a trolley yard. My or, dad worked there. Is that right? Yeah, I, could, I recognize the building. Anything else? Any questions? The wonderful turnout. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it.